there we go. Hello and welcome to the Backdoor GA Show. I'm John McMahon and I'm absolutely thrilled to say I'm joined by former Donegal footballer Eamon McGee this week. Eamon, how's tricks with you? Man, John, cheers for asking me on. I'm, I'm good here, just uh, glad to have a, a weekend of county football over us. Um, plenty to be talking about on the, on the Monday morning now, so uh, happy happy man now, but for h- how long is the is the question? Definitely, Eamon, definitely. And I suppose, well, football aside for the minute, how did you find the last couple of months? I suppose you have a few kids there. You've, you've been busy with that, I suppose. Last couple of first lockdown was rough. Was rough enough. Now, like uh, we'd have been working from home, and crashes were off now, so it it was busy. Um, and was I was just having this crack with the, my partner Joanne there that what saved us was the good weather. We had a wide yeah. spell of good weather during the lockdown, and yeah. if we were going to anything like that uh, during this this winter, now would be would be in bother. Huh? I know, I know. I I've seen a funny picture of uh, you and Christy Toy. Uh, Leading your kids astray, someone think said said to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, even even the, like to to get out and to get out and do that now with the the first lockdown we we're, we're kind of stuck to the to the five k. Mm-hmm. So even socialising was more or less off the cards, and you know even to get get out and you know go for that cycle with with the wee ones and. It was it was good now, but it's, it's a far cry from where me and Christy were about 20, 20 years ago now, fifteen years ago. So uh, we'll <laughs> come on a bit, to. definitely. And uh, what was I suppose like? Obviously, we're probably going to lockdown again. So like, what way are you keeping yourself busy? I mean, you, you say you're working from home and doing bits and pieces. Well, well, I'm actually in the office now. This this last uh, this last since lockdown, the la- right. lockdown number one ended, if that's the right term. Um, I'm actually in the office now, so. We're just kind of on the borderline if we are going to work at home or you know remain remain in the office now. There's, I think it's just me and one other boy in the in the office at the minute. So I'm I'm hoping I, I can stay in. I'm hoping I can stay in, but that it's just all all depends on on the next few days and the announcements and ultimately it'll it'll come down to what happens there. Definitely, definitely. Ah, oh, sure. We, we we'll crack into it, Eamon, I suppose you know you had you had a glittering uh, career for Donegal, and you, you hung up the boots there a few years ago. Tell me a bit about your Donegal career. Like it was it was special times for you. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Donegal career was great. You know, when you say glittering career, the probably the first half it wasn't wasn't great. You know, I think we got a, a national league uh, division one national league title in two thousand and seven, but. We we definitely underachieved, and you know, no point saying otherwise. We I would have rathered. We we didn't. You know, there might have been an Ulster title, maybe two two in that team. We, you have to remember we came up against Tyrone, great Tyrone teams, and great Armagh teams. So, would have liked another medal uh, during that time. But you know, the second half of the career was great. You know, we we were kind of up and up and around there. Big thing that stands out is losing the All Ireland final in twenty fourteen, but. You know, you have the the Ulster titles and that other All Ireland medal to to soften the blow. But um, no, it it was great. It was great times. Even the less successful years, great memories. And went then when when Jimmy came in in 2010, 2011, Um, he added the the medals. And you know, we have the great memories regardless. And then you have a uh, great times and and winning. So it was a uh, brilliant to be part of it. And I suppose, yeah, definitely, as you say, like the early years, and you, you, obviously you felt like you maybe underachieved. And I was talking to Kevin Cassidy there a few weeks ago, a very shy lad from Guidor there. <laughs> and he was saying that just maybe before the Jimmy era, it was kind of, you know, it was all up in the air, kind of, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You t- Listen, there, there was ability there. Um, great players, great squads of players since the turn of the... You know, since after two thousand, the noughties, I think Christy and Kevin, Christy Toy and Kevin uh, Cass's team got to an All Ireland semi in two thousand three, and we we were knocking about a few Ulster finals and came up against as uh, came up against good Tyrone and good Armagh teams. But I still think we we could have nicked the Ulster title in that time. But for me, looking back at it, you know, we talk about managers and. You know, we talk about systems and, and whatnot. Like, but for me, that that group, that group was just mentally weak. Um, 
and just not prepared to go with that ex- extra step. And you know, that's the journey journey we we had to go on. And um, thankfully, we we can embrace it and we yeah. knuckle down. Like, but a, a lot of that credit has to go to an under twenty one team that that came in that had the likes of Michael Murphy. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of him, but uh, <laughs> and then a player called Michael Murphy and Paddy McGrath and you know Jim McGuinness came on came on the scene too and. That kind of kicked us on a bit, and that and that's where we found that belief and found that me- mental resolve now. But definitely, and you know, probably our the the nobbies, that there was definitely a team there to to be in and around the top table, but it just lacked that mental mental attitude, and mental application. Yeah, and like I, I was intrigued by the uh, Jimmy's winning uh, matches documentary. Like it, like. What what you know what what did he change? It, it's just a whole culture mindset within his uh, aim and like because like what he done which is in 2011, 2012, and the years after that like what what all did he change aim and like it was just completely different. Um, you know the big thing you know I have to go back to it is is the mindset and people look for you know when they get clubs will take in a coach and they look for this magic wand and. It's it's so simple that it, it just nearly goes by people. Is uh, the simple thing is that you just apply yourself mentally, and the the rest then will, will fall will follow on. And obviously, we had a game plan, and uh, we trained really really hard, but we probably just didn't have the belief, and we, we didn't have that inner bite. If, it's very hard to explain. You just, you know we talk about mental resolve like it's so different to so many people and it's it's such a subjective thing so it's hard to kind of say this is what it was now but it's definitely the the mental side of things that that jim that laid his foundation and you know when you know we definitely trained hard we definitely had a great system and all that was part of it but that was where the the first step was and I suppose 2011 was a probably a breakthrough year for you like I know it was probably heartbreak against Dublin that day, like, do you think after that double game, leaving Crow Park, you're like, right, we've arrived on the scene here? Yeah, obviously there's a disappointment losing all Ireland, all Ireland semi-final, but when you look at it pragmatically and with, without emotion or anything out there, you, it made no sense for a Donegal team to go from getting hammered out the gate and crossing the Glen the year before to go into an all Ireland final. You know, we, we wouldn't have been ready. We, we could have got lucky. Yeah. But like, it would have made no sense from a coaching perspective. Like we had nothing, not to say that we had nothing, but we were low, probably down the levels from our from our offensive play. Uh, we we had it a lot of boxes ticked from defensively, and you know the system was do, was treating us well. But that next step was how do we get at teams, and you know that was came in in, in twenty twelve. And like say in 2011, like I think we you probably played us along the journey in the Ulster, Ulster campaign. Like how special for feeling was it to win Ulster in 2011? Because I, I was watching the documentary and it just, you know, it made the world a difference to us. Yeah, because you know there was a massive buy-in, and you know, yeah, there was so much sacrifice to what Jim was asking, and now finally he had a medal. He was able to give you the. The Anglo Cell Cup and say this this is the the results or what you have put in here and you know that helped the whole belief thing that whole culture that you know Jim is doing what Jim's doing is is working if if we keep doing what he's saying then then we're going to get more medals and that was a massive part of him I, I think maybe we would have went on, on to one and all Ireland medal I don't know but I think for for that first year for us to go and won the won the Ulster title um was was a big thing for Jim that he he then could go the rest of the way and even even more buy in from from the group of players over there and like was it just simply a belief thing Eamon? because like you know the, like the talent was there the players was there like did it just take a manager to come in and just set down his beliefs and his systems like was it just right boys use our fantastic footballers you can go and achieve this like is that probably all you needed really uh, yeah listen we we needed a lot of things but the the, the big thing was for for us to to have that belief and for us to have that um 
that just go back to that word that that resolve that bite and like the the best way to get that was then through the training field so you you just emptied yourself every night and you know you put your body on the line you you physically gave as much as you can go as you could give and um then that's where the mental toughness came in and on the other half of Jim was telling you constantly that you're good enough you're as good as the Tyrone teams you're as good as these are Matt teams Kerry Dublin whatever else was going and it was just a combination of things and you're gradually getting broken down yeah and eventually you know when you when you do get that medal and this the, probably the system got us through and won the won the Ulster title because and then that was the that, that was the way the gym to say this is what you still get if he's buy in and that that's yeah. that's where the belief came from like i was i was i was like obviously watching it and i think uh, joe Brownie was saying like he was i wouldn't say like he was saying it's like brainwashed or whatever but he just he just he, from an outsider looking in just like he just instilled this belief in you is like would you say like he's just stuck to a very good system like i wouldn't i wouldn't go along with the terminology brainwashed anyway no, but l- listen, there, there's definitely buy-in, like, and people can sell, say that's brainwashed or, or whatever way you want, you know. But there was definitely a big buy-in f- from from the from the players, and that that was needed. I think that's needed in every county squad that if you're going to compete, like, you nobody's going to hand you an Ulster title or nobody's going to hand you an All Ireland medal yeah. with, without some type of buy-in. I, I think a, a lot of players nowadays. You know they want the county lifestyle and they want the rewards of it but you know when you say well you're going to have to sacrifice something here you're going to have to put in a massive commitment and a massive effort and they, they kind of shrug their well that's not i'm not prepared to do that and if, that's just that's just probably might be part of it there's a kind of entitlement out there um these days and um you know that, <laughs> that's what that's what we did we we bought into it and you know we we had the system obviously um and i think a lot is made of that 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 system but i still think you need the you needed the players and you know there, there was times in that kildare game in the quarterfinal there was times against tyrone and and the Ulster championship where the donegal lads needed to dig deep and you know they needed to find that extra extra wee gear and it came back to it just it was just all about the, the mental side, side of things and that came that was we found that through the through the training and so pushing on like 2012 obviously winning winning the sam like and i just remember i think i was watching it from door and it was the court game and i just knew once she's won that no matter who was in the final you're just going to go on and win sam like a special special year in Oh yeah, br- a brilliant year. You know, you spent so much time talking about winning Sam Maguire. It was a dream year your whole life, mm. and then for you to actually actually go on and do it, it, it was just such a relief. Um, and it's just a great feeling. I, I think yeah, it's, it's something that will always stick with me. You know, especially taking the cup home to to get over the the following Wednesday. Um, you know, we, we took it down through the, the parish of Gidor and we stopped just outside my house and, you know, it was literally hundreds of people outside the, it was actually outside the granny's house, so it was hundreds of people outside the, the granny house for the three of us were involved in the squad at the time and it was a uh, special moment and, and special m- memories to have now. It would have been brilliant to add another All-Ireland medal, as it says, in 2014, but it just didn't work out and thankfully, we we have that one in twenty twelve and all the memories and all everything that went with it and it was a uh, it'll uh, help me sleep better at night when I think when I, it helps me sleep better at night when I think back to the twenty fourteen fi- final now that at least I have one definitely definitely and do you think stay in two thousand and twelve like Joey you obviously came up with that kind of a system in two thousand eleven like do you think he's kind of perfected that sort of system or as break out of the fence if you Mark McHugh run up down the pitch, you had Michael Murphy inside. Like, do you think you perfect that system in 2012 and you reap the rewards? Uh, I don't think we perfected any any system. Now, I think we got a lot out of it. Now we're far, you know, we we would have had a lot of KPIs during that time, and I think it was very very uh, seldom that we we scored very high in all, in all of them. So it was 
no way perfect. Uh, even the All Ireland final now would have been very disappointed if you look at it back analytically. Um, would have been disappointed in the performance. Started off flying. We followed the game plan. We did what we were supposed to do. What we were coached for the for the weeks to do in the first 10, 15 minutes, and then we we can uh, we let Mayo team back into it now and um. 2011, we, we kind of got to grips with the defensive and what that was required and um, how you shut teams out and how you made it extremely hard for teams to score. And, you know, 2012 then was about that transition and how we became better offensively, um, be that through the kick pass or, you know, running the teams. Donegal probably were majority attacks would have been running at the teams, but we needed to add that uh, you know, beat the dink ball or the di diagonal ball, and we had the right men, and then around the square with Murphy and McFadden. So it was just about evolving. Like I don't think, even if we kept going now, if we were playing a sixty, we'd never reach the perfection level. But it's just about evolving, and you know, Jim seen an opportunity there that um, the system would work, and and thankfully it did work. And you know, if he was to come into the game now and the, the way things are going, that that system wouldn't work. Um, because as I say everything has evolved now again, and you you have to you have to readjust. And Donegal are are doing that. They're in, in the process of doing that, and they're going relatively well. There's still a few tweaks to it now, but as I say, that's that's what it's all about. It's just evolving from step to step to step. And do you think, like say after 2012, of course you're you're referencing 2014 final carry got over the line that day, like. Do you feel, he's, he's obviously tagged on a few Ulster titles after that, but do you actually feel, just maybe before you packed it in, that you just could have tagged on maybe two more All-Irons after that, or were Dublin just too dominant? Uh, definitely the 2014 one was a missed opportunity, but looking looking back in it, it was, it was Kerry had the homework done. Um, yeah. We didn't uh, ch change it, change enough from what we did all year, and, you know, Eamon Fitzmaurice was... Thinking, uh, we just played right into his hands, and they, they had their homework done. You know, we we didn't um, stray too far away from what we did, and that's probably a big regret on on our behalf now. But definitely, it's something that irks me to 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 say that I lost an an All Ireland final, and irks would be a mild mild word, um, because there's still you know weeks where go by where I think that it still hurts me like that all Ireland final because it, it, it meant so much to you. Um, and probably in 2016, we threw away an Ulster, an Ulster title against Tyrone, you know. That was my last year now, so I'd love just to get one over and my old friends. And, uh, you know, we're four points up, uh, five minutes in the second half, and we threw, we threw it away. Like So it's probably the, the 2014 all Ireland final and the 2016 Ulster final is, is one where I look back and felt that we, we threw it away. And so obviously you were referencing there, like 2016 being like your last year and bits and pieces. Like what was the what was the turning point for you to uh, finish up for Donegal Um, pr Probably I, I could have played. I could have played on for another year or two. Um, you know, I was relatively good shape, still had something to offer now, but there there wasn't this one big massive uh, factor that said, no, this is it for me and Donegal. Now, it was a combination of things, you know, there was the fact that Daisy came along and that, that added a little pressure away from the field, you know, I was wanting to try and push on a wee bit of work. And there was also the fact that while I was in, re in good enough shape and, you know, playing good enough ball that I could give something back to the club because I felt that the club had suffered. They never ever got the the best out of me. Uh, so there was all them we we decisions played played in the thing, and you know it was just a good time. There's a good group of lads coming up. The likes of Ban and them are coming, and Jamie Brennan, and it was just the right time. I felt anyway um, to step away and let, let them lads play on because Donegal had to go on that we. Uh, Transition phase. That's the kind of that's the kind of word a lot of people use now. Um, and every team's going to go through that. Every team's going to go through. And thankfully, you know, Oban and Jamie Brennan got the game time in that phase, and they're they're reaping the rewards, and Donegal are reaping the rewards of it now.
And definitely, yeah, like when you say look back and say like the Ulster Championship days for Donegal, Eamon, like, and obviously being an Ulster man myself, so close to home, like, what was like the opinion on the product on the Ulster Championship over the years when you were playing in it, Eamon? Like, was it hot and spicy or? Uh, Ulster Championship was, was, was special. Like, we're, we're obviously going to say that myself. What we, I think it's, it's the best provincial uh, competition going out there and it's probably the one thing that's saving the provinces at the minute because the provincials are, are a dead duck as far as I'm concerned and I think a lot of people feel the same you know in terms of the future of the the championship structure um, the provincials are a bit like the dinosaurs they're just on, on the way out now whether how or how long that's going to take because Ulster Council, Connacht um, Monster, Leinster, they're going to put up a fight. They're not going to see it happen now, but I just think that they're they're on the way out. But for the time that you know, I played it from 2004 right up to 20, 2016, and it was spe- it was special. You know, some great days. The the Ulster final in Crow Park in 2004, I think it was, was packed house. My probably my first experience of a of a crowded Crow Park and. That that was special. Our, our man hammered us off the field now, but he went on then. Tw- Two thousand and six, we were back up in Crow Park for for an Ulster final. Um, felt we could have, you know, pushed on, maybe nipped, uh, nipped our our, our man, Sorry, they they got us there in the end again. But um, no, it's definitely been a, a lot of a lot of good memories through through Ulster. Um, a lot of good players too. So many good players. And like when you look back, like obviously, like the, these games against Throne, like, like how big was the rivalry over the years, Eamon? Like because obviously, like the week leading up to Throne Donny Gall game, like you could never call it. Like my mates are asking me the rest of, for love and money, you couldn't call that even yesterday. Like what made it so special over the years, Eamon? Well, it, it wasn't too special in the in the noughties because Tyrone didn't see us as a, as a threat, you know. Um, it's it's when we started the kind of balance or the shift, you know, that Tyrone seen us then that what they, that was there at the top, the top of the pile in Ulster was Tyrone's position, and we we threatened to take that away from them, and they reacted, and that that's what happened to them, you know, them games where there was a lot of needle, there was a lot of kind of not so nice stuff, and you know that that was it, but that that was all to do. That's kind of typical of. The Ulster Ulster football and definitely you know the Tyrone and Donegal thing probably took it that that extra wee level like but most of them Ulster games were the same you know there was that wee bit of needle and bit of sledging or mouthing or whatever way you want want to call it now but it was always raised a notch or two when you seen the Tyrone that. And how good a preparation like say was the Ulster Championship over the years for your All Ireland campaign because. Like, you know, basically every game you're playing in Dutch Championship is seriously competitive. So, you know, say your semi-finals and your quarterfinals of Dutch Championship, like how good a prep is that for a very competitive All Ireland series? Um it's it, de- it depends what way you look at it. Like for me, I'd be I'd be of the opinion that it's very hard for Tyrone or Donegal to peak and they needed to be on their top game when in May, say I think Late May was normally the first or preliminary round of uh, Ulster, and you know Donegal needed to be on the top of their game, and so did Tyrone. It's very hard to keep that level going when you had the likes of Dublin were cruising through Leinster. You know Cork probably weren't weren't uh, weren't a force, so Kerry were cruising through Munster, Munster, and uh, Mayo might have got a game. It just depended what kind of notion Russ Common or you know Galway took, but. Mayo might have got one game, and they were then into the into the quarterfinals. So the other side of it is that you know the people make the case that good games is the best preparation. You know, and for me, I don't buy into that now. But there are people that can make that point, and it could be a valid point. But I just think that if you were to imagine it as a graph. Then you know it's very hard to keep that graph at, at a top level and improving and improving for 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 months for months on end now. So it's just the way that the the structure is so unbalanced, and it just goes back to the point about the provincial 
titles probably been been a thing of the past or should be a thing of the past. It made no sense for Donegal in twenty you know twenty twelve. I think you had Derry, you had Tyrone, you had who else was it? Um, you know, good good Ulster quality teams that would have been knocking about the top eight, and then Dublin's first tough game would have been in in, in the semi final. Kerry was the same, so we were challenged from day one whether they could you know kit taper their pre- preparation to for that semi-final. You know, we go back to Paul Ga- Galvin's point. Paul Gavel, I think it was in his book or in an article he wrote, he, he didn't even, he knew that he, the time to play was around August time to, for them. Everything else was a material. They were going to get there no matter what, be it, you know, if Cork might have caught them, they would yeah, stumble through the, the back door, but he could prep his training for August time, whether you know people and club teams in Ulster didn't have that luxury. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm deeply offended because we played it in 2012 as well. So <laughs> I don't know how we're not part of that. Uh, competitive that, that, was game, that was a tough game. You can edit that, but I can just say, But I mean, like touching on that though, like what can be changed? Like I know there is a lot of giving out about the provincial. Like if you were top office, John Horan, like. You know what could be changed to maybe make the GA a better product. Yeah, and uh, you make a good point. Like there's so many people pointing out the problems. There's it's very easy to say this is wrong and this is wrong, and it's harder then to, to come up with solutions. And you do have to acknowledge that the likes of John John Horn and the GA in general are, you know, they they do their best the majority of the time. How often they don't always get it right, but they majority of the time that they they are do, doing their best. Um, for me, you know, because I hope Calvin don't be offended by this, but Calvin to win an Ulster title, they would love it. And to take that away from them might be a wee bit unfair now. So maybe the idea of having the, the provincial titles earlier in the year and having that kind of Champions League style later in the year, um, that, that, that could be something. Um, but for like, it's just so the way it is at the minute is just so imbalanced that I, I don't think that it's fair that Tyrone or Donegal say have to go through that three or four tough games, and where the rest of the provinces have the have the easy route. Um, so yeah, it's hard to know. It's hard to know, and we'll, we'll touch on your club as well, Guido Aim, and like um, you know, it's a great club up in Donegal. You have so much success up there. Uh, what what's it like like what's it like to be part of that club club Guido or Raymond? Ah, it's it's great. It's great. There's good people involved in the club. It's it's a strong uh, club on, on on the culture. It would uh, it's the most successful club in Donegal. So it's always proud to be proud to be part part of that there now. But definitely we we would underachieved a lot with Guido in in my time, and there's only probably. Uh, Coming to the end of my career, unfortunately, that Donegal or Kit or Guido were back in uh, the top four in in Donegal, but not. It was great, you know. The Ulster Club campaign was great to be part of. You know, you go out and you play Corfin, um, one of the top uh, teams to ever play club football, and you put you put it up to them. In fairness, we put it up to them. I, th- I think we're beaten by a better team. No complaints, but. You know, we, we made them think and it would have been nice to get back there again, you know, but unfortunately Donegal club football is in a strong position and we we would love to have got back into Ulster the in twenty nineteen, but great Glenty's team uh dogged it took us three games to get over us now, but they were a good team and they they went on to re- represent uh, Donegal and Ulster. Yeah, and it's, it's a seriously strong looking Guido team. It's probably like a county standard team. It's the aim. And like, what's it like, say, when you when you finish up for Donegal to kind of like go into like the whole, just be completely um, involved in the Guido setup again? Like, is that as good as a county setup as you get? Because the quality of players you have there, you have your brother Neil, you have Or McNeilis, you have uh, Kevin Cassidy, little bit of talent, um, and like, like, I suppose you're probably lucky to go back into that quality. Ah yeah, yeah, you're definitely lucky in terms of um the quality of player you're you're dealing with. But you know, going back into the club in 2016, 2017 was a bit of an education for me, you know, to see how much the club game had been neglected and um how much disrespect club players have been shown. 
Yeah. Because I heard the stories, you know, people, but I never knew it was as bad now. But you talked about, you know, having the quality of players like Sir Owen or Neil or, you know, we have Dara and Kieran Gillespie, you know, so many penny playing was around six or seven at, at the time. But we never we never seen them. We we seen them for um two weeks before the, the championship game on a like on a consistent basis, night in, night out, like and that's hard to prepare any team and it's uh, it's hard for a club manager to come in and develop a style and, you know, work on things if, if he doesn't have, you know, six six or seven players out of his F first team now. But it, it was great. It was great to, you know, to give back to the club because I felt the club have given me so much and I, I'd never given them enough back. And I, I felt that that was old and, you know, it was good to, in the first year, you know, I would have helped Mervyn at all um, in terms of the training, in terms of, in terms of the preparation. Um, but we need we needed someone to come in and take the take the training and take the you know take us to that next level because it was something and something I've learned is that you know I don't believe a player player manager or player coach is, is possible <laughs> because it's it's just so hard to to view the two things. Um, and you know, thankfully, Michael Michael Boyle came in in 2018 and brought the thing to completely different level, completely different standard. And we were up then with the with the legs of the the county the county setup, and we went on and had the Ulster Ulster club run. And like so, you know, we're referencing you going back to your club and bits and bits and pieces, and you know, you seen how unfairly maybe the club players could be treated. Like, how yeah. hard did you kind of find the balance when you're playing for Tony Gall and Guidor to maybe commit the boat? Because I know, obviously, for my own club team, like, you wouldn't see much of the county lads. You'd see them, as you say, a week or two before a big championship game. Like, how hard was it to find the balance over the years, Eamon, when you were at boat? I, did, I didn't find a balance. I, I was a county man in my career, and, I, and that was, you know, the club got. The club got a bit of me, and uh, some days I played well for the club, and some days I played terribly. You wouldn't uh, call me a, a county player watching watching the clubs in some days, and and that was you know just something I have to hold my hands up and say that I I was concentrated on the on the county, and you know the county got the best of me, and the the, the club the club didn't. Um, but and, you know as I said that 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 was one of the factors that played once I said it's, it's time to step away from Donegal that you know when you have a bit something about you, good enough shape, playing decent, that you can you can give back to the ball and give back to the give back to the club and and thankfully I did you know I had a, a consistently a few good good years there and you know there might have been a few bad games yes like everybody else but I think I uh, give. Give a good enough bit back to the club, or and the commitment level at the minute, Eamon, I mean, like it is fairly frightening. Um, like you know, was that something you would have like? Did you enjoy the commitment when you were playing for Donegal, or do you think there's something that can even be done to maybe you know make it a bit more enjoyable for gents? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, the commitment wasn't an issue with with me with with the club. You know, I. Myself and Michael Boyle would be very good friends off the off the field. I uh, room with him for many a year um, with the, the county setup now, but he he was kind of surprised that I was as laid back with the club. But I feel that's the place, you know. If you want to live the elite lifestyle and you want to give the commitment and set, make so many sacrifices, the county is the place for that. You know, I was enjoying playing for the club. I was ready to give a commitment to a degree, but that was it. And you know. It definitely tested the relationship between me and between me and Michael because he knew me as the county player and you know the commitment I give to training and the give to the setup and the time I gave and he was expecting the same at the club level but I, I wasn't prepared to give it you know I was kind of happy enough to go to go along with things and um, and that, that's fair enough um, I, th I think the the commitment with the club should be kind of capped if, if that's the right word that we don't want to scare club, club players away because the commitments should never ever happen but I feel that you know these players that are crying about commitment at the county game and the county level that they kind of they would need to, like do people want to hand them hand them an Anglo Cell Cup and say that this is what you are you don't have to work hard for but here you go and, and think that there's there's room for both of them in the J. There's 
you know, you can have the club game if you want to live that lifestyle and you want to be a wee bit laid back, that's fair enough. But the county game is um, is where you need to make sacrifices. And it really, really bugs me that you hear county players giving out about the, it's a pet hate of mine. And I might be wrong. I might be wrong in this. And uh, it's just my opinion. But I, I think that players giving out about, oh, I didn't enjoy the county game because there's too much commitment. Um, th- that's the way it should be. You know, it's it's an it's an elite. It's an as elite as we can make it, and we don't. It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be about people getting up early in the morning, doing their gym session, heading off to work. You know, getting your recovery sessions and get your ball and watching the video analysis, and you're supposed to have that sacrifice. What's what's the county kind of game? And if if you're not up to it, then that's fair enough. No one's going to. You know, I have more respect for someone that will. Hold their hands up and say that's that's not for me. Warren McNeilis is a classic example, probably one of the most gifted players in in Donegal, and um, it wasn't for him. He just doesn't like that whole environment, and that's fair enough. Like I'm not gonna, you know, I'd love Warren to play for Donegal. I think the the country deserves to see, should see that the player that he can be, but but it's just not his thing, and that that's fair enough now. So it's about getting the two. We don't want to get the two of them mixed up. And lose club players because the com- commitment is uh, is too much. And I, I think that's you know we have to have a bit of pushback. You have a manager coming in, probably getting well paid, bit of ego, and he wants this big buy-in that should be in the county setup. He should be told just to you know sit where you are, and uh, this is a club, and this is the level of commitment that should be there. I suppose the general consensus at the minute, Eamon, is it just seems to be, oh, sure, if we're not successful and, oh, sure, we're getting diddy squat. But your opinion is, like, if you want to go to these places, if you want to win your titles, you're all Ireland, so you have to get up out of bed early, you have to do your gym sessions, you do this, do that. Like, you're a big you're a big believer of, if you want to go to these places, you have to put in the work, and there's no point complaining, essentially. Exactly, and even, even the player, like, even the players that are never going to get a medal, for them to be able to say they're part of an elite setup, it's, it's like there's so much reward mentally to be able to say that you've given your all to something, that you've given, like you've busted your balls at night, every night that you've went out there. And even if you never get a medal for that, to be able to say you've done that is, is so rewarding. Um, and as I say, the, the reward to being part of that elite setup and the responsibility is also on the county boards that they they match the commitment to that they have the food and they have the gym and you know they're the, they look after their players so well but for me that you hear these players oh, like i'm not why would i put in an effort if i'm not guaranteed uh, i have no chance of winning like and that that's what every sport in in the, in the world like that Nobody's guaranteed anything in sports. It doesn't mean we don't work hard for for what we what we want and to, to work hard and become the best version of ourselves. And 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 that sport and that, that's uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to win your All Ireland, no title, you have to put in the graph. Simple as. And Eamon, if football's back, it, it came back this weekend. Donegal had a fantastic win against uh, Tyrone um, yesterday evening. Were you watching it? Were you impressed? I was. I, I was delighted to have the. You know, I did a. I did a marathon on the couch uh, yesterday. You know, we had the three. I just managed. I was in and out of the Calvin Kildare game. Mm-hmm. Now you're making the dinner, right? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you were making the sports yesterday. Eh? <laughs> I was. I was. I was. I um. No, I was delighted. Just we we have it back now, and as I say, we hopefully it'll, it'll remain back now. But in terms of Donegal and Tyrone, I, I was a wee bit nervous because you you don't know. We, we seen in the the Mayo Galway game that you just don't know what's go, what's going to happen or what kind of form team are going on because what happened basically it was last season when the that's it's this is a new season. Although officially it's the one season, but it's it's a new beginning. So. You were a bit nervous, and, and then I seen the the Galway Mayo and how that was panning out, and I was tempted to tweet something smart or something funny, and I says, no, I'm going to wait because it'll probably come back to bite me in the bum if uh, Danny got <laughs> one. I went went the same way, so I held I held fire now, but 
just to sit down sit down and watch it and sit down and see the likes say, you know, Neil was playing relatively well and he was up against Conor McKenna for spells yesterday and that was great to see and you know, Murphy in full flow, Matty Donnelly and that's it's just great to have it. It's great to be able to to watch it. And you know, watch the bit on the Kerry and Monaghan game on Saturday night and um, there's just one passage like the the quality of play is not where it was when it finished up because it's the first game back in months and, that, and that's understandable. But there's one passage of play where Conor McManus scored this unbelievable point. You're just looking at it and just thinking, how did he able to get it up there? Ball went out, kicked out, and David Clifford just scores this another unbelievable point. You're just thinking, just thank God that um, county football is back. This is such such a joy to watch now. Yeah. I know it is great to have it back, and I, I think I heard I think it was Mickey Graham for Cav, and he like he didn't really have much tactics for the Clare game. There's nothing you can really plan with COVID and bits and pieces. Like, are you kind of happy to see this? Like, I don't think many managers have much tactics at the minute, but are you kind of happy to see this product of let the lads play? They can kick points. They can you know go out and enjoy themselves, him because we haven't probably seen much of that over the last couple of years. I, yeah, there, there's definitely an element element of that there now. But how sustainable? Like, if if Mickey Graham's saying that there now, then he's had a few weeks to to work on that. I, I wouldn't necessarily. I don't think Dublin or Donegal or Tyrone, Galway, Mayo are going out without 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 a game plan. Um, there's definitely been work done, be it through the Zoom calls. Like it's it's not ideal, but there's definitely been work done through Zoom Zoom calls throughout the lockdown. And when when they get back and they hit the pit sessions, that's what they're doing is they're working on styles of play and and um, the, their their systems or whatever whatever you want to call it now. But there's maybe a, a lot less pressure in terms of no crowds. There's probably if people go out, this is going to be the COVID year. If you go out, you go out. So maybe players are playing with a little less fear and a little less pressure from, from that perspective now. But like if you have be chatting to Mickey Graham, you tell him to get working on a system because if he's gonna come up again and been working on a system for, for a good for a good while. Mm, definitely, yeah. I'll, I'll give him a ring after this. Same geese on your back, Mickey Graham. <laughs> But um, like you know, it is great to have it back, and you know, like that's a seriously impressive Donegal performance there yesterday. Like, what impressed you most about it, Eamon? Uh, it's probably just the, the the way that you know we we had Michael Langan was missing, Jason McGee was missing, Paddy McBrady was missing, Warren McFadden Ferry was missing. So that's four starters that you could say are missing, and and the fact that the lads came in and you know did their job and. I say we we talked there about tactics that you know Donegal looked to be so tactically switched on. Tyrone tried to bring a really defensive plan, and Donegal were were able were able to work it out. You know, um, you know, and and that's and that's to see them progress to that that they can. They might have struggled with that maybe three or four years ago when, as it says, we talked about being in the transition phase, but they're at a stage where they can work these things out. Um, Kind of didn't think Tyrone would go as defensive. They were obviously going to go a wee bit defensive, but for them to go ultra like fourteen men behind the ball or what whatever it was, then it presented a challenge. And and thankfully, Donegal were able to work it out because that's where Dublin are at. Dublin, you give Dublin a problem, and they they work it out on the field and in real time. And that's where we we all need to get to. Um, Eamon, Michael Murphy. How how does he keep doing this? Like unbelievable. Ah, it's it's, um, it's unbelievable. Now I was just thinking, what what are we going to do when Murphy retires? Like who who's going to fill that void? That you can talk all and make all the best plans under age structures and you know get them the best coaching, but he's basically a once in a generation player, and there's going to be a void. It doesn't matter what the fail safes you put into that and what players are coming through and um, to see I was just thinking I'd, I'd love to get a possession uh, chart and a possession map with that too to see what where Murphy is uh, picking them up and how many times he picks it up and um, thinking about it he, if, if something happens and Donegal are like so screwed they're in big father but for for him and the best thing about Murphy is that 
he's such a gifted player and he's such a leader and he's such a good person. And it's rare you get all of them like mixed in when you talk to Michael, he he'll do anything for you. Um and when he's on the field, he's so driven. And he, he's just thinking about how can Donegal improve improve all the time. And Donegal are just so lucky to have him. Donegal, like I, th- I think we've said everything we can say about M- Michael Murphy and the fact that all them lads respond to him. And probably no secret either that he, he would have a say if he, if you were watching, I think it was a water break, and you were and you could see Michael how vocal he was, and you know Boner was listening to him, and Rashford was listening to him, and he he would ha- and there's not too many players in any county team around Ireland that would have the same say and have the same influence on the team as as Michael now and I think it's a great combination when you look at Donegal when you have Boner you have Rochford you have Lacey and you have Michael in there and they all can bounce each bounce off each other and they seem seems to be working well it seems to be fluid and it seems to be dynamic and it's it's going it's going great for Donegal. I've absolutely no doubt you marked uh, Michael in training him and over the years. Like we we see him on the TV, but you've seen him in the trainings. You've seen him up close and personal. What makes him stand out above the rest? Because he is just an incredible footballer. Ah, he's, he's incredible, and there there has been times. That's why I always said it. I was never nervous about big games because I felt that if I was bringing it to Murphy in training. Then I had no, I had no need to be to be nervous. Like, and there, there was times where, you know, I had to put it up to Murphy, and there was times where Murphy just blew me out of the water and made me look like a, a small boy now. But it's just his, his desire and his. He's obviously gifted. He's worked extremely hard, you know, out with the ball, kick and freeze, and he's put in so much time. To get to the player he is and he still does you know i remember when i moved to larry kenny 2011 2012 i would get the lift up with him the odd day and you know normally it's either him or big neil that would get the get, give me the lift up or else i would drive and big neil and myself would leave around half five five o'clock murphy would land, land in the street flipping half four four o'clock because he needed to get up and get the preparation get in get the physio Get out, kick a few balls, like and you know, I remember the fir- first w- few weeks. Now I was texting, "What's the story, this Murphy man? He's away mad altogether." And he says, "You just gotta get, gotta get used to him." And that's why he's the best player. That's why he's the best player in Ireland because he p- puts them in. And it's also a timely reminder to the to the boys that are saying, "You know, I, w- I want an Ulster title. I want an All Ireland medal." Yeah. But I would go on to give the time. Then you look at Murphy and, and what he's what he's putting into. To become the best and be the best. And would you be of the opinion, Eamon, it's, it's fascinating that, like, say with Murphy, you, you you say he lands at your house, what, half four, like an hour extra, and like he might land up the train an hour extra. Do you feel it's just them little bits and pieces that makes you the players, like, well, obviously yourself and your Michael Murphys and your double footballers of this world, stand out and be the best? Yeah, de- 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 definitely. Everybody, like, this is the, th- the thing about ability there's so many players are around around the same ability um what different differentiate them from every the best from the rest of them is the, is what they do and how they apply it and put that ability into into practice and you know it's the bits that people might not see you know talked about i would never ever put myself on, on the on the level close to michael murphy he like if you're talking about tiers of footballers there's you know, Murphy, Jack McCaffrey, you know, there's very few that come, like David Clifford is up there. And then there's maybe the tier below where the, the rest of us mortals live now. And um, that, that's what separates the, the players, those players in the lower tiers than the players in the top tiers is what they do with that ability. They don't just, you, they don't just kind of, What's the word for it? They don't just use that. It's it's you know it's the training, it's the preparation, it's the it's how much mentally that they put it put into it, and you know that that's that's what it's all about. 
And can you see, you know, this year, like, it's just so up in the air at the minute, and we could be in level five by this, like, tonight, you just wouldn't know, like, like, can you see, can you foresee a championship? I know we had the league games at the weekend, but, you know, can you see an Ulster championship this year at all, Eamon, or what are you thinking? I, I, I can, I, I think, you know, it's so hard to predict any. It's so hard to predict anything nowadays. You know, I could say something at two o'clock in the day. Come four o'clock, it could be completely different because the news is nearly evolving on that hourly basis. That there's word coming, this is going or that's going. We're level four point five or. But for me now, as as we say it, I think the GA will will go ahead with it. If things get worse, then you might see it pulled in, but. I think we've seen enough posit positive feedback from, you know, what the gales of Ireland are getting from having a county game and the fact that we're able to talk about it. Me and you were chatting about, you know, Michael Murphy and the night all performance and, you know, me chat watching Conor McManus and David Clifford. And it's, we're ultra GA fans and we, we just love to have it. And it's, it's such a good thing to, to be able to concentrate on because, as I said at the start of the pod there, that, the first lockdown was tough and, and you know that was true good weather and you know there was long evenings this is going to be a winter and the weather's going to be probably rotten known ireland and it's going to be you know short evenings and we, we need we need something you know just keep the head occupied and like would you <laughs> well obviously with Farag you're saying like if it does go into level five like championships will be pulled like would you agree with that or would you be kind of like Jesus please God keep it going I would be saying this please God keep it going because the county game can be managed it's it's going to be so different people are kind of thinking because the club game and the club game just kind of made a mess of it for for the for the whole thing going forward and that's why the pressure's on the J at the minute is that um it's gonna be so different. Um easier to police where where Crow Park itself was able it's not thirty two different county boards trying to police the whole thing. It's gonna be Crow Park and majority of games are on T V, you know, you can keep it close. People know that they're being watched. They they're gonna be on edge about guidelines, about shaking hands and and all this type of stuff now. But I would be saying, you know, if we can at all, just plow ahead with the games. And that's easy for me to say, and it's probably easy for you to say too, John, is we're, we're going to be sitting on the couch watching these games. If the players aren't comfortable, then that's a different story. Um, you know, the 52% from the GPA survey probably definitely did uh, surprise me. I thought it would be far higher. Um, 25% yeah. of them or around that mark would have said that they're happy if the if there's more precautions brought in so you probably you can see them coming in you're probably talking about 70 percent want the games to the county players want the games to go ahead then i would have thought you know I, if you asked me before the results i would have said that would have been up around the 90 percent so if the players aren't comfortable then we definitely have to take a look at it but if the players are comfortable then you know go ahead with it it's tight margins at the minute, Eamon, because like you'd lead from not being able to feel the team at the minute. For man, had to dig it to, to get through the trenches to even feel the team at the weekend. Ricey McMenamin was hitting out the whole situation at the minute. How unfair is it on the likes of your Leitrims and your Fermanagh's of this world at the minute, Eamon? Um, I need to know more about the, the Leitrim thing. You know, I tweeted something probably judgmental about Leitrim, but I, I deleted it just because I need to see a wee bit. But it, like, there's a lot of people that if Fermanagh can feel the team and you know do their best, and you know they had so much um, things going against them in the build up to this league game, and they were still able to field, then you'd wonder why uh, Leitrim can't can't do the same. And probably Div Division Three is tainted now at the minute. Because you know the the whole legit legitimacy of the of the league and the point system is up in the air now. But it's it's tough. It's tough. Um, I think Ricey was talking about there's double standards for the the top teams and the lower teams, and, and he's hundred percent right. That's that's always been been the way. I don't think a Dublin or a Mayo would have been would have been treated the same. They would have been given a wee bit of wee bit of breathing space now and. You just hope that there is a bit of leeway when teams encounter a problem and when they had a case or whatever, a wee cluster, 
anything happens like that, that they're given a wee bit of breathing space and says, uh, because they've worked hard. Listen, there's there's been work put in through the lockdown in terms of Zoom calls, people doing their own physical preparation and for them to lose out over, you know, not being given that leeway it would be very unfortunate. And I suppose, looking back in the last couple of years, Eamon, as well, like, you know, and you've, you've had a couple of years to maybe reflect on things and watch more games, a lot more time in your hands. Like, have you been happy with the current product or do you think Dublin's domination is going to stop anytime soon? Or? I I would have been happy, but like, as it says, I am extremely biased. I just love GA, like, so probably not the best man to to be to be asking. Um, I think the majority of teams, sorry, a few teams have responded well to Dublin's dominancy. Um, you had the likes of Kerry have, you know, they haven't won as they haven't won. They've knuckled down and they've worked hard and they, they nearly beat, they nearly stopped the five in a row. Donegal have done the same. Mayo obviously have done the same right throughout the decade. Um, Tyrone, Monaghan, Galway. The, the, these teams have all done like in a, a few. There's so much better coaching going on nowadays and that's inev inevitably going to lead to a better product on, on the field now. And, you know, there's... I feel that the team's given out about Dublin's dominancy, you know, need to do a lot of looking at themselves first. And then maybe, like, there's definitely Dublin having a, a financial advantage, right? But how much of an advantage is that? If, if you were to make it a percentage, would it be five, maybe maybe 10%? So, you know, the, the likes of a few teams in Leinster and, and there's teams out there that cry away about Dublin's uh, financial advantage. There's an awful lot for them to get uh, fixed in-house before they go looking at that. And once they do, yeah, have a have a go at Crow Park for, for, the, for this advantage. But, you know, there's so many things to get right in, in, your, in your own county first. And then, you know, you concentrate on, on other things first. Then. And again, would I be a fair believer? Like once they asked me over the years, oh, will Dublin stop? But like to be honest with you, like I'm like it's not Dublin's fault that there's so many good players coming through. Like the clubs have coaches within their club, and um, there's a, like they have a raw talent coming through. We can't really blame like Dublin's clubs being really good, having the right infrastructure, the money's coming in. Like it's easy for us to say this, but you know, you know it's. We can't really blame them if anything, because they are so successful at what they're doing. Yeah, and, and you can't and you can't blame them. And like, we we have to adapt uh, for for different counties. You know, we we have the and Dublin have plenty of challenges themselves. People don't talk about the challenges Dublin have in a, in a massive uh, in a massive city like that. Um, so they they overcome them, and it's it's all about getting players involved and getting the right people involved and. You know, you look at the likes of Derry, massive population centre, Belfast, Cork, Limerick, you know, they're, they're these big population centres that they aren't getting enough out, enough out of. And, you know, the GA can help, definitely, but the, them them counties themselves need to need to get to get on board because that, that's what it's all about. It's about for me is getting enough players through the ranks, coached well, and if, if every age group was to, you know, give two or three players to the senior county team, then, you know, you're not going to be far away. They're well coached, they're tactically switched on, their ability is 100%. And, and that's also going to help the club games in, in, in them counties, you know, that they're sending players through the ranks that have all them things. And although they might not play for Cavan or for Donegal, they're they're going to be additions to the club football, raise the standard of club football then. So there, there's a lot of things counties can get right um, first before they start looking at what Dublin do or don't. And like, uh, I always ask this like to the players, like, would do you miss, say, uh, when you're playing for Donegal, the week leading up to an ultra championship game final, your finals, the weather's good. It's a great time to be play, playing a bit of football. Like, when you would you be kind of maybe jealous, of Neil, going off on a Sunday and playing for Donegal? Ah, yeah, 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 definitely jealous. When when I see Neil, and uh, when I see any of the lads that I, that I've played with, the likes of Michael or Neil or Paddy or McBrady or any of these lads that I, I would just love to be. even looking at it yesterday there and myself and the 
the wee man, we were looking out for trying to spot Neil on the field and I was just thinking, geez, I'd, I'd love to be there. But as I says, comes back to it, there's so much to do to be playing county football that I don't miss the preparation. I don't miss the, you know, breaking my balls at training and, you know, as it says, leaving the house at half four or five o'clock to head for training at seven. Um, but I don't miss that there now, but I, I miss the... I miss the build up and I'll definitely, you know, play in Tyrone and Championship, whatever time of year it is, is something that, that that I'll always miss. And even yesterday, I don't normally get animated during games, um, but it's just whatever when Tyrone and Donegal are playing, you know, I was kind of shouting at the TV, giving out, I think Ryan gave away a bad ball and Michael himself gave away a ball and I was effing them out of it. And I'm never normally like that. It's just whatever it is about Tyrone and Donegal that, 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 uh, Brings it out to me. And pay for play, like pay for play and players as well, Eamon. Mean, like, you know, would you have stuck around for a bit longer if a bit of a few point, a few pounds was coming your direction? No, less than selfishly, de- definitely. You know, you you take the take the few pounds, uh, but for the good of the game and for where where the game's at, you know, in terms of, I, I would rather we di- we didn't go down that path. Um, there's an argument out there now and something that I kind of buy in that we're on that path. It's just an, it's inevitable that we will get that form of pay for play, but I would be shouting that we, we've got to change it. We've got to do all we can to, to turn it around um, because it brings so much problems. You know, money will taint it, uh, greed will taint it. Um, and it's just a direction that if we can, we should, we should stay away from because if, if you see now, you see a lot of county boards are, are in bother because running a county team is so financially draining and it takes so much time for, you know, volunteers to to get the money and, you know, to, to, to run this juggernaut that is a county team. And what's going to happen, or it has happened already, is that a few county boards have found themselves in bother because they, they can't. The thing is just beyond a volunteer. So what Crow Park is probably going to have to do is put a full-time employee in, in every county board to, to run this. Um, that then will spike and what you'll see then is county managers because the whole thing is becoming unsustainable in terms of time commitment and what, what they need to be putting in. County managers are going to start to be paid and that will then inevitably lead to player, players getting paid. So that's the course we're on at the minute. We can we can do all we can to, to change it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a united effort. And looking ahead, Eamon, like you're, you're, I'm presuming you're doing a bit of coaching with the club. Like, what would be the plans for the future? Uh, listen, there, there would have been a few uh, different uh, job offers there in terms of in this last few years in terms of getting a bit of, bit of coaching now. But it's just something that I'm on that learning journey. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm reading. I'm, you know, I'm watching. I'm doing doing all this now. So when when the time is right, I'll, I'll make that step towards it. But I just feel at the minute. I'd rather just still be in that learning mode, um, and but it's definitely something, definitely something that, that I have an have an interest in, and you know I love chatting about the different aspects of it. You know, people talk to me about the the Twitter account. The Twitter account is just taking a hand, and ninety five percent of the time and acting acting the monkey now. But uh, there's definitely a part of me that enjoys, you know, reading up on the coaching, the the analytical. You know, aspect of it and uh, you know it's it's a it's a road that I, I will go down whether I'll be any good at it now is is a different question but it's something that I'll uh, definitely be going down and you'll, you'll hopefully get a couple more years uh, from playing for Guido I presume yeah well we, I, I don't know what the plan is like uh, this year was a bit kind of a bit of a wash out we Kilkar beat us on the, on the semi-final and, and probably beat us beat us well enough now is this uh so we'll see. We'll see what the, what the what the plan is is next year. There's a new management to come in, and there will be a few decisions to be made now. And if he wants to go with youth, or he wants to go with uh, give the old box like me another another go of it, then we'll we'll chat now. But there will be uh, decisions to be made in terms of the club, but will not be made today or tomorrow. Maybe a few months down the track. And I I can't I can't uh, leave, leave, uh, leave him without any attention. What was it like to play with uh, Neil over the years for Donegal and of course Guidor as well, Eamon? Ah, it was grand. It was 
grand, you know, Neil's crabbed enough, like he's crabbed at the best of times, but in the heat of a championship battle, like he's uh, he's worse. So uh, you, you never, he was always like, you were the man he gave out to. He would never give out to the likes of McGrath or to, you know, Lacey or Frank McGlynn. It was just you were always getting a rap. And you, I might have had nothing to do with the goal, might have been conceded, and I might have nothing to do with it. Now I was getting a rap anyway. But no, it, it was a great honour. You know, we played together since under 10, under 8. And uh, knew each other's game inside out, you know, knew what way when he was in bother, you know, he needed an extra bit of protection or, you know, when he was on his game. And you, you just knew that you knew him inside out. And he, even to this day with, with, with the club, like that with, we wouldn't overly communicate on the field now, but we 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 just know what, what each each of us is going to do before we before we even do it like and to have to have that bond and that understanding takes probably you'd have to be family to have it and you know have to be playing through through all them years and he seems to be a quiet sort of fellow um, uh, Neil he doesn't believe in any of this Twitter crack or wouldn't be a user of it no no Neil's disgusted at every tweet that I put up now he says just shakes the head and um, no, neat, neat. That's just the just the character of him now. We're two different, uh, two different characters, all right now. And he just keeps the head down now. I'd say a lot of referees and a lot of opponents would rather he kept the head down and stayed quiet on the field now. But um, he does his venting and ranting on uh, on the field, and whether I would do the do it online. <laughs> brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff, Eamon. You've been fantastic with your time. I'll finish up on this one. Uh, who was the best player you played with, and who was the best player player you played against? Um, probably. Listen, probably is Michael Murphy. I think that's an easy one for any Donegal player the last fifteen years. Uh, the best player I played against is changes. You know, um, probably Sean Cavan is up there. Player, don't think gets the credit as ours as Michael Meekin in, in Galway. Um, few battles with him down through the years. Um. Uh, probably have to go with Sean Kavanagh. I'd say that uh, he he's up there. He was it's an Ulster podcast, so we'll just stick with the with the Ulster man. No Kavanagh, I'm devastated. And uh, there, is there any point <laughs> asking? Uh, Rose Mc <laughs> is a uh, serious. I don't I don't think Rose McKiernan gets half enough credit for what he's for what he's given to Kavanagh throughout yeah. the years. What if I was putting together a uh, top fifteen Ulster? Um, He's definitely someone I'd, I'd have in, in and around the in and around the team now because he he does he does he definitely a player that deserves an Ulster title for the for the work and for what he the what he what he brings to. And you, you never came up against uh, former Kildare hurler Shawnee Johnson, no. <laughs> luckily enough, I never came up. Uh, luckily for him, I never came up after the transfer crack now because he was a, he would have got dogs abuse for it now, but. Uh, no, definitely another good player. I don't didn't really understand the whole transfer crack now, but another good player in his day, all right. And is there any point asking you who your best manager was? Ah, it's a bit like the Murphy one. Probably you have to go on the, with McGuinness and what he brought to the table and how he transformed the, the whole lot. Eamon McGee, absolutely top man for joining us on the Backdoor GA Show. It'll be up on all platforms in the coming days. Top man, um, enjoy yourself and uh, hope the kids aren't too much trouble for you. <laughs> okay, take care. Thanks for that. No, thanks for asking me on. Eamon, thanks very much.